Hi, I'm Veronica with Mini Urban Farm, um, and I got a lot of questions recently about composting. Um, so more specifically, kitchen composting, this bin right here, um, from friends and family, people who come over, especially during the holidays, wanted to know things like if this smells, what's the benefit of composting, why are you keeping trash on your kitchen countertop, um, things like that. So usually when I cook, um, I'll take the vegetables and fruits, um, herbs from the garden, I'll take whatever waste products would normally go in the trash and I'll put them in this little bin, even coffee grounds. Um, there's some green tomatoes that the dog decided to chew on, um, that went in here. Um, pieces of different fruits, um, just things like that. So I'll put everything in here and then when this fills up, like you can see it's, it's relatively full now, um, I'll take this and I'll put it in the outdoor compost bin, which is in the backyard garden. Um, it's also a very small compost bin, it barely takes up any space at all. So today I just want to talk about why, why even bother doing this. Um, and if you want to do this, how do you start doing this? Um, and then the time it takes and all of that good stuff. So um, pretty much everything in the kitchen can be composted if it's a fruit or a vegetable. Um, anything that you don't eat. Um, like the apple cores or strawberry um, tops with the greens, carrot tops, things like that. If you're not going to eat it, you can put it in here if it's a fruit or vegetable. Now, you shouldn't put in here um, anything like meat or dairy, um, anything with oils. So basically, anything cooked, I try to avoid putting in here just because I know that I cook with oil and I cook with olive oil and I don't want it to be contaminated. Um, I don't want it to smell and I don't want it to get bugs once it's outside or even here on the countertop. Um, most things in the kitchen like scraps and I don't think you can see it here but I have a cutting board here with some scraps like parsley that I wasn't able to use in one of my recipes um, and I'll just take that and I'll put it directly in here. Now I went through this morning and I was cooking so to save it for you guys and not kind of waste the video um, I did take everything and I put it in here that I was using. So coffee grounds um, with the paper on it. It's recycled paper and that goes directly in here as well. I have some some eggshells, I don't know if you can see that or not, but I have some eggshells from the eggs I made this morning. I rinsed them out just briefly and I put them in here and then some other clippings from breakfast. So now, normally I would put that directly in here. Um, this one is pretty full, but I think I still have some space. So this is my kitchen compost bin. This is basically just a vacuum sealed pasta container from Home Goods. Um, it doesn't have to be anything fancy. They do sell one specifically for kitchen composting with the wood on it so you can leave it outside and it has a little special bin. Um, it looks less suspicious on the counter like that. So if you're uncomfortable with having a, essentially a, a thing of trash um, on your kitchen countertop, then that might be a good way to go. They do get a little bit expensive. You can always build your own. Um, but for me, I just take this and I put it under the sink and every time I'm using um, the cutting board, I just kind of leave the, the cabinet open and I just keep putting in things from there. Um, mine is vacuum sealed. It doesn't have to be vacuum sealed. I just prefer it like that just in case. It doesn't really have a bad smell. It smells like kitchen scraps. Um, it doesn't radiate through the house or anything, but still. Um, mine just has a little vacuum seal here. I don't know if you can see that or not, but this one just pops open. And then I put the scraps in. I cover it again and I pop it back in place. This one doesn't spill. It's not gonna, wouldn't it be funny if it did spill right now? Um, but it's never spilled on me. So I just take this and when this fills up, usually two or three days or so, um, it kind of starts getting like a weird, like juice kind of stuff here on the, on the bottom. And I just take it and I put it in the outside compost bin. So the kinds of things that you can put in compost, um, like I talked about kitchen scraps, um, coffee grounds, even the coffee, um, the coffee filter you can put in here. Um, Eggshells, I'll usually put in here but I will crush them up first. And you can put them in whole, it just takes a lot longer for them to decompose um, because decomposing is just basically breaking down um, the organic matter and so I just kind of crush it up first and it just helps it um, to decompose a little bit faster. So I'll just crush it up like that. You can grind them, I know people do that. Um, I don't bother, it's a little bit too much work for me. So I just kind of scrunch it up like this and I put it back in, I pop the lid back on it and I put it in the garden. Um, in the garden compost bin just like that. So other things that can go in compost, um, again, if you have vegetables, the tops of these, anything that was green and alive at one point is a, a good nitrogen source for the compost and that goes directly in here. Um, I don't bother cutting it up or anything. 
um, if I'm not using a part of a vegetable or if I have extra, um, if I brought an extra parsley or something from the garden and I, I'm not gonna use it all, it goes directly in here and eventually back into the garden when it becomes compost. Um, I also save um, pieces of cardboard. So I have baggies like this of cardboard um, that I save. Um, any any cardboard boxes that I get, as long as they don't have any shiny stuff on it, um, no tape, no you know extra printing on the side, just things that are plain. I cut them up and every once in a while I toss them in as well. Um, there is a ratio of carbon to nitrogen, so things like this brown brown matter, um, paper, um, coffee filters. Uh, things like that are generally considered brown matter. When it comes to nitrogen, mostly the things, the green things, anything like grass clippings, um, plants that are currently still alive, um, vegetables, things like that are going to be nitrogen. You always want to have about a ratio of 30 carbon to 1 nitrogen. I know that there are ways of testing it to make sure you have the exact ratio of 30 to 1, um, but I, I generally don't do that. I just take whatever I have in the kitchen and I put in here and then every once in a while I'll add in some paper material like the cardboard. When I take things out of the garden like dead leaves um, and the, that sort of thing, I'll put them in there also. And generally if I see it's getting wet, um, like the stuff is getting bushy and not decomposing properly, then I'll add in more paper products. If I see that it's, it's still dry and everything looks still the same after a couple weeks, I'll tend to add in more of the of the green things from the from the kitchen scraps just to make sure that it's getting the right ratio and it doesn't have to be perfect but the closer to that ratio that you have the faster everything will compost and the nicer the compost you're gonna get um, and you can use it uh, starting earlier in the garden and in other potted plants and, and that kind of thing so I just want to go ahead and put the rest of my stuff in here and I'll try to make it fit as best as possible um, and if you really have any questions about what's considered green or brown, um, I would just Google it. Um, I take, you know, the, the name, if it's parsley, I'll take parsley and then I'll add uh, nitrogen or carbon and it'll generally pop up that parsley is nitrogen or um, cardboard is a carbon. So you can, you can just go ahead and take this entire thing and put it in your compost bin outside. Um, this does not take up a lot of space, which I love. I don't like things that are big and bulky on the countertop unnecessarily. Um, so I'll take this and I'll show you outside and put it in the compost bin with me. Now I'm going to take all my scraps from the kitchen in my compost bin and I'm going to add it into my larger compost bin here outside. Um, it is about three feet by two feet um, and it takes up, I don't know, about six or seven feet with the legs and everything on it. Um, it's right here next to my garden, which is great. So I can take the compost that is produced out of here and take it in a little bucket and put it directly in the garden um, without having to haul it in from, from another place, uh, without having to buy it at Home Depot or Lowe's, and plus you know what's inside of it. You know exactly what you put in it, you know it has the right ratios, you know um, where it came from, and it's free most importantly of all. So I'm going to take this um, and I'm going to put it in the side with my little clock on it. This particular compost bin has two compartments, um, that way you can keep track of which one is composting and which one's not, which one you keep adding to. Um, so I'm going to take this one and put it into the side where it's not currently decomposing because I keep adding things to it. Um, so I'll do that and then I'm also going to take my, my little basil plant um, which originally was full of basil leaves and I used all the basil leaves up and it is um, at the end of the season so this plant here is going in compost. Um, it originally had like a whole bunch of basil leaves and then I let it go to seed so I could seed save for the next season. I have uh, nice sweet basil. I'm going to take the entire thing um, and this will provide a good source of carbon um, for the compost bin. I'm going to take the entire thing just like this, pull it out. Ah. And then I'm going to put it, I'm going to drop it right into the compost bin and spin everything up. Alright, 
so that is pretty much it. The composting um, in a small space, you get kitchen compost and you put it in this kind of compost bin out here. Um, you twirl it around a couple times and then it usually takes about anywhere between four to six months, um, depending on the season. This black compost heats up really nicely and then you just take it out, you use it um, in the garden. You don't have to buy compost from the store and it's an easy way to fill your raised beds or your potted plants um, when mixed with other um, coco coir or peat moss or anything of that sort. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them below, but I'm really glad you guys could join me on my composting adventures. Um, I really enjoyed having a compost bin and I hope you do too.